Doctor Who Season by Season Season 7 Review Season 7 of Doctor Who represents a major turning point in the series. Screened in 1970 it was not only the first season of the 70s but the first season made in color, the first season starring John Pertwee as the third Doctor and the first season to see the episode count reduced from the crippling 40-odd episodes per year of the 60s seasons to a more manageable 20-something, in this case 25. But season 7 was a big departure in other ways too. Season 7 was the first and indeed only season of Doctor Who to be entirely set on Earth, with no alien worlds visited, nor were there any historical adventures. The Doctor was grounded, exiled to Earth with his TARDIS inoperable and the most we got this year was a trip to a decidedly inhospitable parallel universe. Derek Sherwin produced the first story before being replaced by Barry Letts, who went on to produce the whole of the Pertwee era, but the tone and style of the rest of season 7 had already been largely set by Sherwin and Letts would not really make his own mark on the show until the next season. Season 7 sees the Doctor working as scientific advisor to the paramilitary organization, UNIT, United Nations Intelligence Task Force, fuck this unified shit. It also has an entirely new cast, with newcomer Caroline John joining the series as scientist Liz Shaw, and Nicholas Courtney, who had played Colonel and then Brigadier Alistair Gordon Lethbridge Stewart in two Patrick Troughton serials, now promoted to series regular. The tone of the series was also very different. Those previous two stories featuring Alistair had been grittier than was the series norm, with the terror firmly set in the real world, and season 7 took this idea and ran with it, creating a season of Doctor Who very different from any before or after. The season begins with Spearhead from Space, written by Robert Holmes. Holmes had written two fairly nondescript serials for the final Troughton season, The Crotons and The Space Pirates. But here he's let off the leash and delivers a story that begins to create the reputation the man now has, as one of the, if not their, greatest Doctor Who writers ever. Spearhead also introduces the Ortons, resurrected a couple of times by New Who, and the concept is never better used than here. Spearhead is a spine-chilling and eerie classic and its famous sequence, the iconic scene where shop window dummies break out of stores and begin massacring early morning shoppers, was well and truly completely ripped off by the first New Who story, Rose, which did not do it any near as effectively, memorably or frighteningly. Spearhead is also memorable for another reason, being the only Doctor Who story of the original series to be completely shot on film, rather than part film part video as was the norm for the show's first 22 years, or entirely video, as was the case for the final four seasons of the classic series. This came about due to off-screen events making it impossible for the show to use the normal studios, where video was used, so director Derek Martinus went and got himself a film camera and shot the whole damn thing on film and on location. The result is arguably the slickest production of the entire show, and the only one so far to have been released on Blu-ray and boy does it look nice. The second story of the season was Doctor Who and the Silurians. Yeah, you heard that title right. Season 7 was a highly experimental time for the show particularly with the style of the titles, and another of the season's innovations were the length of the stories. Although Spearhead had been a standard four-parter, the rest of the three serials in this season were all seven episodes long, primarily to make the budget stretch further and to be able to spend more money on each story by, quite simply, making less stories. The Silurians is written by Malcolm Hulk, who did such a fine job of co-writing the war games the season before with Terran Styx, and he is no less impressive here. As the title suggests, the story introduces the Silurians, well done, but new series fans will probably be a bit shocked by their appearance here, because here they are what they are supposed to be, humanoid reptiles rather than the bog-standard Star Trek alien design they were given in New Who. They're also taken seriously and don't go around making lesbian jokes, shockingly enough. Anyway, I digress. 
To be honest, the Silurians is probably my least favorite of the season, and yet it's still pretty top-notch stuff. Its major problem being somewhat lethargic pacing in the first few episodes which you tend to forget when shit really starts kicking off after that. Still a great story. Next up is The Ambassadors of Death, which is credited to writer David Whittaker but was actually a sort of a hybrid rewriting effort between Whittaker, who was the original writer, Malcolm Hulk and script editor Terran Styx. Despite the script difficulties The Ambassadors of Death is another excellent story, as a bunch of astronauts come back to Earth with a deadly touch and a great reluctance to take their helmets off. Ambassadors is a cracking military conspiracy thriller where the humans turn out to be the bad guys and has some fantastic action set pieces. The finale of the season, and the last story to feature Caroline John is Liz Shaw. Although she does not get a leaving scene and is written out off screen the following year, is Inferno. Written by new writer Don Houghton Inferno is as good as season 7 and the Pertwee era gets. The Doctor is helping out at an ambitious project to drill into the Earth's crust for a new energy source, but something nasty is coming up the pipes and turning men into murderous monsters. When the Doctor gets flung into a fascistic parallel universe where the drilling is several hours ahead of our own, shit really hits the fan when it transpires that, murderous monsters with bad joke shop fangs aside, the real problem is that this drilling project will basically cause the entire planet to dissolve into a puddle mold and goo. Oh fuck. What a mistake her to make her. Inferno is a seriously intense story with fantastic performances from regulars and guest actors alike. Perhaps the only quibble is that the drooling monsters look a bit daft in their later stages, when they look like Romero zombies to start with and seriously shit you up, especially with that creepy ass mewling noise they make, but by that point the story has your buttocks clenched so tight with tension you probably won't dare let out a derisive snigger anyway. All in all season 7 is a truly excellent season of Doctor Who and a very different and brave one. It stands at a tangent to not just the rest of Doctor Who but even to the rest of the Pertwee era and, aside from a few not entirely unfair criticisms that it lacks much of the show's normal warmth and humor, and a few naff 70s effects aside, is pretty much bulletproof as great Doctor Who. Season 7 is, ironically, my seventh favorite season of Doctor Who and I have zero hesitation in awarding it a straight A.